Hey everybody, welcome to the Engadget Podcast for the week of, oh my god, I didn't put that in the calendar, it's, uh, I'm going to tell you in a second that it's the week of September 9th. That is always the most excited I hear you, is when you do the, hey everybody, welcome to the Engadget oh, Podcast, yeah, no, and no, then no, you no, just come all, right back down. It's all the rest down. Of your- No, no, not this week, because we're talking about <laughs> Apple. Oh my god. So much. So excited for this show, so many exciting things. Hey Dana. Yo. How excited are you to talk about Apple? So excited. So excited. Is that why you brought an <laughs> Android <laughs> I've got to represent, Apple. you know. Um, I mean, for what the are you record, representing? you're representing people who want to have Android on a laptop. Representing people who are not having trouble okay. connecting to Wi-Fi right now. Mm. Yeah. Actually, my Wi-Fi is behaving today, which is a first. So okay. there you go. Fifty-fifty. Terrence, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. You recovered from the weekend? I am. I, it took a couple of days, but yeah. the hangover has you worn off. You weren't even in Germany. You have you have no, no excuse to. <laughs> I was, there's plenty of drinking to do here in New sure, York. Sure, that's fair. Germany. Oh, but I miss the beer. Oh, I miss the German beer so much. It's really good beer. It was. Yeah, really good we beer in Germany. We were both in Germany drinking the beer. We were both in Germany drinking the beer, which you probably actually are very aware of if you heard the um, very troubling last episode of the Engadget podcast, which was recorded at uh, 1 a.m. on the final night, uh, our final night in Germany. And you were all at least three or four drinks deep by that point, hopefully. Uh, uh, well, you were probably one, but you're a lightweight, for the record. I wasn't drunk. I was just very sleepy, because yep. covering a trade show is exhausting work. So I was present, but not present. So Brian gave me a recap. I was not <laughs> drunk. I was just re- really uh, frustrated with uh, Dan, who was a few sheets to the wind. <laughs> um, oh, and is never Dan. invited back on the Engadget <laughs> podcast after his performance last week. Well, well, I mean, gotta... you, you, you don't really know us until you've heard us do a drunk podcast. Yeah. So, um, That's fair. And Dan has his own podcast. Mm-hmm. To be yeah, fair. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'd be like that on your own podcast, Dan. <laughs> Don't ruin ours. Don't ruin <laughs> ours. You've got a whole continent to ruin, Dan. Uh, Engadget Podcast, as I mentioned, it's the week of uh, September the 9th, which means that it's time for, uh, for, for Apple Talk on the show. Can we just pretend it didn't happen and skip it? I mean, well... <laughs> what is there left to say? We haven't talked about it on the show at all, so there's everything left to say. I think most uh, people wait... Until, the Until Thursdays at 3.30. At some point, I need Nobody's to make a case the... for why I would maybe buy the iPhone 5C, because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm the only one in my class of tech be. journalists who might be. Why, well, why do you have to wait to make that case? Well, do let's, it now. Well, let's <laughs> start with what actually happened. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that from the top. I know so. how he rolls, see? Yep. Uh, didn't really, didn't really hear anything at all, um, from, from the software standpoint. I I guess we didn't really expect to because all the iOS 7 stuff was announced in what, April? Yeah. I don't, I can't think of anything new that was. There was some backend stuff, but all of that pertained to, uh, to hardware things that were rolled out. Yeah. I mean, after that tease where they showed us how different the look and feel was for the OS, anything else they could say about tweaks to the, the native apps, it seems like small news. Yeah, um, basically. Yeah, I mean the one, the big, I guess the big reveal was that it has you know biometric fingerprint reading, which again pertained to the yeah the hardware on the uh, on the. I guess the only big software thing was that it's sixty four bit actually. That and we was can't pretty really big. appreciate that yeah. until we live with it. Really. Yeah, For I mean, now it's just a marketing. Claim. It's it's big, but at the same time, it's, it's twice as big. Terrence. It's, it's going to have very little immediate. It's twice as fast, twice, twice as, fast. as good, and twice as much multitasking. <laughs> and it'll get twice as hot. The thing about these performance claims, too, is I noticed during the presentation that Apple was comparing the performance to the original iPhone, which came out in 2007, which to me does not seem like either a very fair or helpful comparison. So at this, this point, thing I'd rather is 800 just times the- faster than the original iPhone. Yeah, really Which helpful. literally ran it's, on a corn chip. It's probably at least 1,000 times faster than the, the Apple II, for example. I mean, I, it just depends on how far back you want to go. Yeah. I mean, this thing blows Lisa out of the water, Terrence. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> uh, so the iPhone 5S, uh, as expected, pretty much uh, aesthetically exactly like its predecessor, save for one very important thing, which is that the the home button is different. It's a little bit larger. Yep. And um, it sends your fingerprints directly to the NSA. Yep. <laughs> nice little... <laughs> it's nice how, little it's how Apple feature. is helping create a nice file for you uh, on you for the government. 
And I, I will say, I will say, I know that this was this was rumored um, in the lead up to event that that you know it would have um, it would have a fingerprint reader. I, I I was still a little surprised that that actually happened. That seemed like the most left field prediction. Because Apple's kind of conservative about adopting new trends. I mean, it doesn't even have NFC. In yeah, and and we've never seen. I mean, you know, uh, uh, biometrics have been around forever on on laptops. I mean, you know, Lenovo's had them for the longest time. But yeah. we, we've seen it on a couple of phones, but it's never really gone anywhere. Yeah, uh, I think Samsung had it on one or two and i want to say lg had one but like nobody cared <laughs> nobody used it yeah um uh so so you can there are literally two things you can do with it you can log into your device mm -hmm. and you can buy stuff on itunes yep i think the the second one is pretty cool that'll save me a little bit of password typing yep um apple has since said that they're not opening up to third-party developers at least for the time being so that's kind of unfortunate because i feel like there, there could be some pretty cool applications for something like this there could be um i don't know i feel like that's that's something that Apple's probably going to be very hesitant to do because there's all sorts of concerns Security about yeah. issues. Yeah, which is something which is something and 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 you know they they certainly know that that was something that they addressed right at the top by saying that none of this is going to be stored in the cloud. It's yes. not going to be on your iLife account. They're not just going to put a photo of I mean, your, can you imagine your how up much how how psyched the FBI would be about that of just having like an immediate database of it's every It's good that Apple got ahead got ahead yeah. of that by coming out and saying that right away. Uh, so yeah, it's all it, it's all it's all done locally. So fear not. But I, you know, this is I was talking to somebody about this earlier. I, I had to do a, a radio interview earlier today. I was on the radio, Terrence. Not a big deal. Uh, uh, oh, are and, you? Yeah, <laughs> and, and and this is. I mean, you know, this is. Uh, I guess for the time being, we kind of have to take Apple's word on this. Yeah. But you know, let's hold their feet to the fire a little bit. Let's uh, let's make sure that none of this information is going anywhere. Yeah, it seems fair. Uh, other exciting things about the 5S, uh, new new camera, souped up camera. There's some cool fan camera features on there. Yeah. 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 Slow-mo video, burst shooting. Sure. Everything's Im kind of improved. The low-light right? performance is probably the biggest deal, but I don't know if people realize that because it's sort of a less sexy marquee feature. Yeah. The fact that there's a larger active sensor area for yeah. um, same, light collection. Same megapixels, but mm -hmm. larger size, so better low-light, much less noise in the photos. Which is nice, but yeah, again, not a very sexy thing. Probably a lot of people are just like shrug. I don't know. Sure, they're all you know they'll auto correct your shaky hands. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I mean, nice. But throughout, surprisingly, but not uh, optical image stabilization, which a lot of people were anticipating. It's just just a uh, digital, which is not quite as good. So sure, it'll. I mean, for those Nokia six second clients that you're shooting. <laughs> Yeah, and they, and they and they and they weren't very subtle about that after it came out. What was the um? What was that thing that Nokia stuck on their Facebook page? Oh, I f actually didn't even say it, it was so something. Oh, it was something about, about imitation it. being the sincerest form of flattery, something along those lines. But I mean, you know, if Apple came out with a forty-one megapixel handset, sure, that's fair. But everybody's yeah. trying to make their cameras better. Yeah, it's. There's only so much you can do. Are you sure they were referring to that? I haven't seen the post. Are you sure yeah. they were referring to that or to the colorful to the casings colorful. on the 5C? Also entirely possible. Also entirely possible. Because that, that to me seems to like all the, of it. Sure. They're the just colorful like, casings to me seems like more of a direct Nokia ripoff. Uh, with the 5C, which is what you're going to run out and buy immediately after this show. Maybe. Pre is open tomorrow. Maybe. I, I, I do believe. like my yes. Android. I do. Yeah. Why? Are, okay. So let, let's um, let, let's break down the 5C. It's. Last generation's hardware in, it a, is in a new... literally the iPhone 5 in a colorful case. In a colorful case. Um, the price point is, has, has dropped. Understandably so. Fairly significantly. Buying last year's phone. It's a $99 phone on a two-year uh, contract. So the, uh, so the lead up, I mean, the conversation, again, God, everything. We saw everything ahead of time. Apple is just not is not containing leaks very nope. well. At all. They and used I, to be really good at that. Do you think they're just playing the game? Do you think they're playing the game that all the other manufacturers are, which is let's get excitement up before this? They um, don't need to, though, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's already excitement around Apple events. I don't know. I mean, that would certainly mark a drastic shift in their attitude sure. um, and how they handle that stuff. But I don't know. But I mean, like, say what you will about Apple, however you feel about Apple, people get excited. Yeah. In the lead up to Apple events. So they don't really. They don't need, they don't need to, to play to the game. That. I think yeah. they plant leaks in publications like the Wall Street Journal. I think those. Um, I, I don't think they necessarily planned on those leaked photos coming from random factories. Well, yeah. I mean, if they're planning, if they're planting a leak, I'm, it's probably something along the lines of, hey, there's been an update to iLife. You know, it's probably not like, hey, here's a picture of our new phone that everybody's. Yeah. super excited about anyway right 
Um, so, but it, the conversation in, t- in, in the lead up to the launch of the 5C was, you know, that Apple's finally going to be targeting developing nations. Obviously, this is a huge space and that they're going to have a phone that's, um, you know, a direct reaction to uh, to what Android's been able to do, come out with all these budget handsets. Yeah. We've seen, however, that that's not the case. Again, yep. pricing is really attractive here in the States. It's $99, but it's $99 with a two-year contract. If you get it off contract in the States, it's 549 Yeah. Um, and I think... God, I, I I heard somebody threw out a number for China, which is I think closer to seven hundred dollars, wow. which is you know one of the markets that that you probably would be targeting with a budget handset. Yeah, so they're playing in the mid range space basically. Yeah, they're, I mean that's 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 even the high end of the mid range space. I mean that's a hundred dollars less than the five S, which is theoretically a much better phone. It. it 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 is, but I, I you know I I think I still think it's a smart move from them to come out and say, hey, here's a flagship budget device. Um, if you're jealous of people with iPhones, if you want to get into iOS, here's a, here's a reasonably cheap way to do it. it. It's a smart move in um in the states. It's a smart move in this market, but it's I just I I can't see it making a lot of a lot of uh, momentum in in all of these developing countries. No, I can't either. I mean, the thing is. I mean, I guess in some more developed area, you know, in the city centers in China, maybe mm. they'll have some success. Apple's already had some success in China, for the yeah. record. Um, you know, but I think they'll have a little bit more success in city centers in China. They might have some good success in the more urban areas of maybe India or Russia. Yeah. But like any of the truly developing nations, like any place in the Middle East or in Africa, that's way too expensive. They're getting they're going to get hammered by the existing Android and probably even to an extent uh, Nokia and BlackBerry who are still able to offer. Sure. And, and uh, Mozilla is making an aggressive push there. Yeah. I mean, canonical well, theoretically will be making an aggressive push yeah, there. If they I, I actually you should watch out for them. Yeah. yeah. You think so? No. She, she was, I don't know. She was, I could, it sounded sincere. No, no, no. no. no okay. Yeah. I'm, I still, need to work on my little, sarcasm. Sorry. Still a little Maybe drunk it would have helped Saturday. if I was actually looking at you as opposed to guys, phone, But I'm just guys, so disinterested in this Guys, let's stop. Let's talk about Canonical. How will Canonical change the uh, smartphone market in the next year, Dana? I don't want to talk about Canonical. You don't want to talk about Canonical? <laughs> you don't want to talk about Ubuntu? Uh, that was a nice idea. No, I mean, it is. I, yeah. yeah. I, don't, so, I, I love them so much. I don't want to say bad things, but it's, yeah. They're. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it just wasn't a very well thought out idea, I think. Dana, why are you excited about the iPhone 5C as somebody who is a well, Windows Phone Android I think fangirl? a lot of the talk about the 5S, I think a lot of people seem to presume that the 5S has the better design. I've never owned an iPhone, but I've seen many people smash their iPhones to bits. Terrence, you were saying that your weekend ended with you smashing whatever phone it is you have. My, oh, yeah, um, that's an Android. Hands. Okay, yeah. it's an Android point taken but i actually in some ways i think i would prefer the plastic and part of it's because i've always admired nokia's colorful design so you get a colorful iphone like this you don't have to convince me it's a nice design but it looks like it would just be more durable less breakable less of a pain in the ass maybe i don't even need plastic dana maybe i don't even need that 29 nine dollar case to go with it although they are very um charming looking yeah um so there's that and if it is the iphone 5 I could probably deal with the performance. Keep in mind, guys, I own a Droid Razor M, so I already have learned that I can deal with a mid-range phone so long as it's well executed. Mm-hmm. The five C looks like it might be a pretty well executed mid-range phone. If it's basically the iPhone five, oh, which sure. whose performance we enjoyed last year, and as for those camera features, I would miss the low light performance maybe, but would I miss the slow motion s- shooting? I doubt it. I mean, Not I mean, that much. I don't know about you. I mean, I'm sure there are people for whom that sort of stuff matters, but I mean. The only photos I take with my phone are like photos for Evernote. That's it. It's like I take pictures of beers I drink. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Basically, it's the durability thing. I yeah. think that there are reasons to buy the iPhone 5C perhaps that don't have much to do with price. I mean, yeah, I would like to save money and I like the idea that you can get what is it? Uh what the the $99 one is what? 16 or 32 gigs? 16, right? 16. Okay, but still, for the price of a flagship, you get the 32 gig model, which for me, in a way, is, is a nice selling point. I care more about that in a way than I do about the fingerprint sensor or the, um, you know, the slow motion shooting. I, I just think that there are some nice perks that don't have to do with the lower price. Sure. I mean, what you know, ultimately, what it comes down to is that 
a lot of people who buy iPhones are looking for the hot newness, right? They're looking yeah. for yeah. The, the 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 coolest new device. But yeah, no, it's. I mean, obviously, it's. I. I'm not going to throw my five out the window because the five C is here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've yet to. I, I'd like to actually like touch and feel the thing and see how well built it is. I mean, yeah. Apple seems to think it is. They were very excited about the fact that it was made out of plastic. But I mean, and, know, and Brad but not, said that it felt pretty solid considering that it's plastic. It's sure. Again, I feel like belt. Nokia is sort of this elephant in the room because the Lumias are, are also polycarbonate and also feel pretty good. Mm-hmm. So. I, I'm sure that the five C feels great. It's just stupid. Um, not surprising though that Apple would make it seem like they're the first to make a nice feeling plastic phone. They're not. Yeah, I don't think. You know, yeah, I not don't. every plastic phone is a Samsung. Uh, and even some of the Samsungs are not too bad. This guy feels okay. You <laughs> learn to to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think they were suggesting they were the. the That's the not first the one you smashed over the weekend. So no, this that. is this the is, one. I, I, smashed I, over I do the agree. Weekend. Is that you, the one you smashed? You know, it's still alive. The. The screen is now like recessed by a couple of millimeters, and there's a little crack at the bottom. Corner. So if that was an iPhone, it would be shattered. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if it was an iPhone, it would have shattered the first time I dropped it on yeah. carpet, probably. Yeah. That's why I've got mine in this gigantic <laughs> rechargeable case. It's, it, no, but it's a fair point. I mean, this is always the this is always the argument that I have with people. I, I know not everybody's like me, but I think probably most people are carrying their phone in some kind of a case, right? Um, a lot of people. Uh, I I know I'm, you know fairly atypical yeah. by not using a case and refusing to use a case. I mean, I actually see my phone maybe 5% of the time that I use it. <laughs> so, but, but you know, I mean, I will, we'll wait until Brad, Brad drops his, <laughs> drops the 5C before we pass judgment on how rugged the thing actually is, right? Hopefully that will be part of our review. We're going to oh do God, a wouldn't that be great? I mean, it's not a secret that we're going to do a review at some point. At some point, yeah. <laughs> Uh yeah yeah I'd be great would that be great that'd be great yeah I mean I don't think Apple would be happy <laughs> if we've been dropping happy. dropping their phone but you know I mean well you save it till the end yeah <laughs> save it save until you have no bridges left to burn yeah and then smash all the phones in the office uh wow did we run out of are we are we done I don't I I don't are know. we done with Apple you know what actually here's what I'm a little shocked by that the 4s continues to hang on. That the the, the the that the five is out of the picture, kind of, sort of, but the four. Yeah. Well, you I know, mean, I mean, it makes it makes sense for them to have a, a free pricing tier, sure. No, I understand that, but um, to keep this thing with the legacy form factor that apps aren't designed for anymore, and with the legacy connector instead of yeah. lightning, it seems like a weird thing to just hang on to this, you know format that you've stopped using like two years ago. Do you now. think they just have a bunch lying around? In a That's what I'm somewhere? assuming. They just might have made too many. Yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, maybe uh, I, I was discussing this uh, with Peter earlier. I mean, you know, because the question is where, where Apple goes next year, right? So now they've got these two essentially flagship models, or at least like two the very, very clear lines, mid-range. right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, uh, you know, next year d- does does the five C downgrade to a free phone? Is this is this something that you actually? I mean, will they actually have a device that they can continue to to target at at developing nations? I mean, that, that makes sense, but no, you've got to no. kind of keep the, you've got to keep a mid-range around, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. What do you, you move the 5C to free, release the 6C for the well, mid-range, and the e- 6S. I, I think even at its current pricing, the 5C is going to sell like gangbusters. Oh, I think it will too. It will, but, um, but you know, Apple's... I don't know Apple's, what Apple's incentive would be to drop it down to free. Apple's got to continue to grow. I mean, that's basically what a lot of this comes down to right now. Yeah. When, you, when you look at, when you look at analysts. Yeah, that they've done incredibly well, and they've got to continue to they've do better. They've painted themselves into a corner. Sure, and how do you do that? I mean, you, 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 really, you really try to compete with Android. Yep. Which, again, is going to be... Could be a little tough. It's gonna be a little tough. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for Apple. I'm, yeah. We just kind of blew right through that. I mean, uh, at end of the day, was anybody really was anybody really excited about this announcement? Um, you know, I got the f- feeling that people were not super excited about it. Like it was it was the same sort of reaction pe- people gave for the 4s. It seemed you know where it was just kind of like meh. But I actually thought it was a, it, at least the 5S was a much more impressive announcement than people give it credit for. How so? Um, I think the move to 64-bit for yeah. 
um, this iOS 7 is very important. Very. It, important it's a hard for, thing to make sexy, it's, though. Yeah, it's a hard thing to make sexy, but it's very important for future-proofing the device. Sure. I think the fingerprint thing is an interesting out-of-left-field thing, like you said, and that's something that Apple hasn't done in a long time, is have like, this really strange thing they throw at you, and you go, oh, wow, that's great, that's weird. Um, but the other thing is, another one that's kind of hard to make sexy, is the A7 mm-hmm. and the M7, the, co- the uh, co-processor, yeah. That does, um, you know, motion yeah. sensing and all that stuff, which basically it sounds like they're building all that wearables technology that people sure. like are looking for in you know your there jawbone. Was Nike, there was a Nike Plus yeah, announcement at the event into the phone yeah. directly, which is interesting and kind of exciting. And I think there's a lot of room for them to mess with that technology. And I'm sure once developers get their hands yeah, on exactly. it, you're going to see a lot of yeah. super interesting applications coming out, especially for fitness types. I, I think I think that's a I, I think that's a fair point. I just I, I'm wondering how big that market's going to be. I mean, I th- for fitness for fitness apps. I think uh, Nike Plus and Jawbone and Fitbit have proven that it's a pretty sizable market. I mean, it's it's a niche, but it's a niche big enough to support several companies. And for Apple to build the technology for Nike Plus into its devices, including its low-end iPods. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, a lot of that technology was already in place. I mean, they've, you know, accelerometers, you know, gyroscopes, all those things are already around. It's, you know, GPS, it's probably, it's already pretty easy to yeah, use but the I mean, to track if, it right now. If, even though that technology existed, if it wasn't a viable thing, if people didn't want it, Apple wouldn't bother to build on it and say, okay, we're going to put time and effort into actually developing and partnering with Nike for this. Well, thing. Apple, you know, Apple's clearly not playing within the existing market. They're expecting it to get much larger. If yeah. they're going to spend, if they're going to spend that many resources, if they're going to make the M7 such an an essential part of the announcement, they're expecting this to take off in a big way. But yep. I do agree with you that. Um, I, I think the, I think we need to start looking at the implications outside of just fitness here. Yeah, well, I that's, mean, that's kind of what they could think of. But you know, as you said, like when, once you've got that technology in play for developers, then you know, I think you're going to see a lot things. of super interesting stuff come out of it. I am not a developer, so I have no idea. I am I write about it because I don't have the those creativity. Who can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Um, I want to move us along to let's let's talk about the surface. Uh, the surface, which is coming, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the timing is interesting, I suppose. Um, Microsoft now owns a hardware company. Well, another hardware company. It makes very nice mobile devices. Yep. You're not going to see a Nokia tablet here. Though. I know we're not going to have it happen this soon. Which is, but, but the reason why I bring this up is because it's hard to. Unless this is like a really stellar device, it's hard to see it as anything as being as anything but kind of a placeholder until we actually see. Well, a and indeed, Nokia the rumors tablet. make it seem like it, it's um, just an evolution of the original. You know, a refresh, sharper screens yeah. on the lower end, the RT version, um, two stage kickstand. Um, not expecting a huge revamp here. So, what exactly does two stage kickstand mean, by the way? We'll find out on September twenty third <laughs> okay. when uh, Microsoft that, has a press event. I keep seeing that circulate, and like those words put together mean nothing to me. You I know cannot hard, envision what this is supposed to be. Do you know how hard it is to push a Surface over right now? I mean, twice as hard. <laughs> okay, it's, Surface pushes you. I mean, over. maybe it'll be a more nice. robust hinge. You know, with the hinge mechanism with the um, kickstand. I don't know, but <sighs> this is what this is what we have to get excited about in the Surface too. Yeah, I new I, kickstand. I, well, I, I mean, so 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 this to me is this is to me is something that's been kind of problematic with the Surface from the beginning. Is the Surface always felt like a proof of concept? Was you know was Microsoft coming out and saying, "Hey, look, hey, look, you can make Windows eight, Windows RT tablets. Look, we made one. Yeah, we knew maybe you guys weren't going to get super excited about making one, so we made one for yeah. you. And it's not it's not a crappy like slab of plastic that nobody is going to want to. Carry around. I mean, you know, say anything else you want about the Surface, and we have talked many, many times sure. about what a failure the RT is. It's still a sexy piece of hardware. Eh. Yeah. You don't think so? Yeah. Yeah. I think it. I yeah. think it's very nice. If it ran Android, it would be like <laughs> four hundred times better. But uh, it doesn't. N- nothing. Nothing. I again, we have no idea what's coming. We 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 can be very su- surprised on uh, September. September 23rd, but I just don't think that anything that Microsoft had in the can prior to 
them finalizing this Nokia deal is going to be nearly as nice of a piece of hardware as something Nokia is get capable of producing. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, um, that's, that's something to legitimately get excited about. But clearly, this has been in the works for a while. And this predates them, you know, yeah. predates the ink drying on the on the Nokia deal. I mean, I, I expect it to be a largely evolutionary thing. Nobody's going to be blown away. It's probably going to look almost exactly the same as the first batch. Um, I am some somewhat surprised, but not completely blown away, that they are keeping the RT line alive, though. Yeah, I mean, there are the, Microsoft. Supposedly, is, I mean, supposedly, but, but probably. Yeah. But Microsoft probably. is official. You know, is is well, probably will officially be the only hardware manufacturer to do that. Yeah, because everybody else keeps dumping that. I, I mean, maybe if they're able to drop the price dramatically, it'd be a much more attractive option. But I can't see if they're going to continue to sell it at what uh, five or six hundred dollars. That why anybody would ever buy this. Thing. Unless, unless, and this was this was some speculation early on for the last one is. Um, the, the only way, I mean, again, yeah, I mean, it is it, it is a nice piece of hardware. So the only way that for them to do that is to really subsidize the crap out of the thing, and they just don't have, particularly from a from a tablet standpoint, they just they don't have the media offerings to do that. I mean, they're not Amazon when it comes to delivery. Yeah. This is true, but I think that will change in the relatively near future, and it would be smart to kind of get ahead of the game for once, which Microsoft is historically bad at doing, because they're clearly making a big push for media and home entertainment with the Xbox One. But you've already got to have people locked into that ecosystem to deliver that. Yes, and if you're able to push Xbox content Mm -hmm. to the surface without trouble and that includes you know music movies and games you know the the smart glass thing then that's a compelling option to help lock people into it i don't uh, what what i will say is i don't think that i mean obviously there are a ton of xbox uh users out there there's going to be a lot of people buying the xbox one yep but i don't think that that in and of itself the overlap between people who own xboxes want a tablet, don't already own a tablet, will buy a tablet specifically because it played well with the Xbox One is nearly large enough to support a device like that. No, not necessarily, but, you know, I don't think the overlap of people who like to read books and watch TV shows and are looking for a tablet was large enough to necessarily go out and buy a Kindle Fire. And that turned out to be a reasonably successful thing. Yeah, but Kindle's never made reading books, you know, a, a centerpiece of the Kindle fire. It's that everybody is already pretty well locked into that Kindle ecosystem. So it just makes sense to transfer well, it over. They were locked into the book ecosystem because the Kindle fire uh, predates yeah. the streaming as part of the Prime service, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Um, I'm pretty sure it does. I think the I HD... I don't know if that's the case. The that's HD doesn't, but I'm pretty sure the original yeah. Kindle Fire predates the uh, streaming being included. But whether or not it does, I, I, you know, you, you're, you make a good point in that not that many people were super locked into that. Yeah. So what, I mean, you know, does... They, they, I mean, they've got to make it an incredibly user-friendly ecosystem then if they're going to kind of pull people in that way right yeah well that's <laughs> i mean that's something that's 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 been one of the major um tent poles of, of of the fire success i'm mainly concerned about that for the rt it's it's much harder for me to make a case for the rt when you can't run x86 it's hard apps. for anybody to make a case for the rt but i can i can i'll think after this we'll be able to make a better case for the pro at least because if it has has well processors it will at least have really good battery life, which the first model was lacking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can make a case for basically a full-fledged Ultrabook-type computer that also doubles as this little tablet. Um, the RT, though, I still can't quite make a case for it. Because Microsoft has two viable operating systems, and then one that kind of lives between the two and doesn't offer any specific benefit to users. Yep. We'll talk about a placeholder. I mean, I think... Intel's Atom chips are getting better and better, and I think it, it gives battery life that can give ARM a run for its money, and you can still run some x86 apps. Not that it's a really pleasant experience running some heavy-duty apps on a device like that, but it, it does render RT moot, basically. I mean, here, you know, this, this, is, this is, I think, one of Microsoft's biggest failings. I think they've gotten better at experimenting to a degree. You know, they've gotten a little bit better in recent years of you know trying things out a little bit but if you're going to do that if you're going to be a little bolder and brasher with the decisions you make 
you've also got to be willing to let things go. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, that's the whole thing about experiments is sometimes they don't work and you move away from them and you focus on, you focus on your other tablet ecosystem. You don't need to. Uh, I, 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 I'd be interested to see, I mean, I, I think we're all assuming that, you know, that A, that, that a Nokia tablet is inevitable now that they're part of Microsoft. And yeah. B, that it's, I mean, that it's got to run Windows 8, right? They can't, it, it, it's got to. I, I don't know. It depends on how quickly they push it out the door. If they're able to push it out the door before RT officially dies, then I think there's a good chance you'll see it running RT because Nokia has never made it. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's not true. They have made an x86 device before, but traditionally they've dealt only in ARM uh, architecture. So that's where their relationships but are. The other, but, but the other side of that coin, the other potential, and I'm just crazy talking here because I know this won't happen, but obviously the other option, Nokia is very familiar with another Windows operating system. Yes. I mean, they can make essentially larger Windows phone devices that are tablets. I mean, obviously, Microsoft is not going to let that happen. I mean, that would honestly be the best idea. Of course. But not going to happen. Windows phone, again, I, I, I can't think of any reason why it's not other than like some hardware support limitations, which I think are continue to be in place. But beyond that, I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't be a perfectly viable tablet operating system. Yeah, because I mean... The whole thing with RT is that they want you to use the Metro, the tiles, and all that, and that's essentially the same thing you have on Windows Phone 8, but it's a much better fleshed-out ecosystem. But where do you draw the line, then? What do you do with tablets um, that are basically, like I said, that are are meant to be real hybrids, that are meant to be basically keyboardless ultrabooks where there's you know some sort of keyboard well then you run window it. you run run windows so you, 8 you, you and give you people don't deal with rt you, because rt is yeah. not a viable option you for give that. people the option that's yeah. that's what it is you i mean that this this is again this is another issue that microsoft has been having is is they really want to work with hardware partners but they're really hampering what they can do with their software is that easier to explain to consumers having the windows phone tablets and the windows tablets versus having Windows and Windows, but one version of Windows that can do a little less. I don't think, honestly, I, I don't think, think ultimately that you would even need to have that conversation that much. I mean, I think people people know what a tablet is. Yep. I think people now have a pretty good idea of what a convertible tablet is. Yeah. And that that's something that you're going to want a full operating yeah. system on. I mean, people can deal with the fact that I've got um, OS 10 on this and that I'm going to have iOS on this device. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the thing is that both Apple and Android and Google, when it came time to make a tablet, went, the best and easiest way to do this is to scale up our mobile operating system rather than scale down our desktop one. And so that is what people expect when they buy a tablet. When you buy a 7-inch or a 10-inch device, you expect it to be running a slightly tweaked, blown-up mobile operating system. You don't expect it to be running a stripped-down, barely useful desktop operating system. Doesn't explain Chrome, though. (laughs) Well, Chrome is a different thing. (laughs) Speaking Um, of... Are we speaking? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can speak of Chrome. So, okay. um, so, God, a lot of things were happening. Who knew uh, this was going to be a week full of tons of Chromebooks? How this many was, did we get I yesterday? There were four announced. I think we got hands on with maybe two. I don't think they were all necessarily on display. Yeah. But boom, four new Chromebooks. So I said, Hey, Dana, um, uh, IDF is happening this week. Is there anything that you would like to talk about with regards to IDF? And you did have something in mind. Yeah, so all these Chromebooks, what they have in common is they all have Haswell processors inside. And my question was, I sort of did this devil's advocate thing with myself. I was like, if you're running something with Chrome OS, do you need that kind of computing power? You need the battery life, yes. That's the devil's advocate coming in. You need the long battery life if you're going to be unplugged and online all day. But Which isn't hard to get if you just have a cloud-based operating system. Yeah, but do you need that performance that you get from Intel's latest and greatest core processors? Um, core i5, no yes. less. You think so? Um, well, I mean, clearly the push from Google is to blur the line between what is traditional desktop and what is traditional cloud computing. Things like native client, where you're essentially running code that would pass for a desktop OS on OS X or Windows running in a browser. It's not stored in the cloud somewhere. You're not relying on a server to do all the heavy lifting. You're relying on the computer in front of you. But do you? I mean, but you need you need that hardware to do that. Does that mesh with the way Chromebooks are being marketed in stores like Best Buy? You know, oh, it's a computer. You can do web browsing. Your YouTube. Does anyone care that it has Haswell? No, they don't. Well, nobody it's, knows what Haswell is. I mean, no, when nobody it comes knows right down to it. But but you know, if if and. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's so funny that we spend so much time trying to put ourselves in the shoes of average consumers. But if you if you do, they're going to want the fastest thing they can buy for that price, That's true. right? That that too. People like fast things. That's why. Yeah. You know, you were saying you can you've learned that you can live with a mid range phone and you can deal with some of those limitations. But there's a reason why. You know the iPhone 5S is probably going to sell more than the 5C, and that's because people want new, fast, shiny, the best. Yeah. They, you know, the mid-range works, it's fine, but people really like things that are super fast and shiny. There's a, there's, uh, the, the, the breakdown, though, between, that, between the, the phone analogy and between the Chromebook analogy is people are buying smartphones because people want smartphones, but the Chromebook is you go and buy a Chromebook for a very specific reason. I mean, you buy it be- because you don't need advice that does all these other things. When it really comes down to it, you know, because uh, theoretically, at least you're spending a little bit, little bit less money on it. Theoretically, as long as you're not buying the Pixel. As long as you're not buying the Pixel. That seems, I mean, for most people, that seems to be, be the main reason. Because, at least at this point, Chromebook is a device that's defined by what it can't do. Yes. Would you buy it for this price? HP's is going to be, I think... 300 with Core i5. Not bad, right? 300 is not bad at all. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, because I think Samsung's was what, 250 with an ARM processor? Something like that. Yeah. Though when it comes down to it, it's like, you know, what what is this offering me that I'm not getting with a tablet and a keyboard? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, a lot, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, The tablet, a tablet's fine for like casual web browsing and you know, apps that are distinctly built for it, but... Which is what most people are doing on a Chromebook. No, anyway. but anytime you have to, like, you know, fill in forms or do anything yeah, more complex were, than, like, like that, like, you want a full-size screen to be, web browser. I happen to be... People who are looking at the live stream now can see it. I'm using the HBook, HP Slatebook X2, which is a Tegra 4 Android... For, uh, not Android. Tegra 4 Android tablet with a dockable tab, uh, keyboard here. And... I am actually using our CMS in the Chrome browser, and I'm looking at you know other stuff too. My email, it's not as pleasant as a Chromebook. I mean, I could use this on the road if I had to, but it wouldn't be as pleasant. Yeah. I mean, if you're, I guess my my next question would would be if you're really kind of looking to do businessy things, are you're you probably not a getting a Chromebook? No. Classrooms. Classrooms, for sure. I've said that for years. That's and that's well, and they've had some yeah. success there, too. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. But I, I, I'm just I'm at a loss to figure out how this makes sense for the public at large. Um, I want to think, like, I always want to, to imagine that um, Google's got some grand plan in place. I'm beginning to think they do. Okay. Honestly. Um, got, uh, shed some light on this for me. I mean, well, for I love the idea of Chrome OS, and I've just, you know, Execution is always terrible. Why do you love the idea of Chrome OS? I mean, I live my life in the browser as is. Uh huh. Um, there's a reason why I don't boot OS X on this stupid mm-hmm. thing. Um, you know, I don't need a lot of desktop apps. There's very few things that I use. So a machine that is automatically updated, basically perfectly secure, I don't have to worry about... Um, having issues with Flash not being updated or any of these things, and that I can log into it, and if I've done something on another computer, all of my information is right there Mm -hmm. because it's synced through my Google account. It's the same thing, you know, with why I like, one of the reasons I like Android phones is if this phone dies and breaks, all I do is I log into my Google account on another phone, all of my apps, all of my information, all that stuff comes in normally. So it's, it's that sort of syncing and seamless list that I like. Unfortunately, yes, the execution has been pretty terrible. Most of the machines that have been made are not very good. Battery life and prices are not what people would hope or expected. And ultimately, most consumers want or need desktop apps. Even if they don't need them, they expect it. This is Google, though, and, and, and to give them to give them benefit of the doubt, which obviously you're, obviously you're doing, uh, Android was not a success by any stretch for its first several iterations. It no, also it wasn't. wasn't a very well-baked operating system when no, it comes it wasn't. Right down to it. So, I mean, you know, if anybody's got the brains in place to make this really full-fledged operating system, it's them, but... Um, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't see myself moving away from a, from a more, more traditional laptop anytime I mean, in the near future. I don't, I don't see myself doing it anytime soon, for sure. Um, 
but I think with the push toward them forking WebKit for Chrome, the push towards native client, um, the pixel, you're starting to see them. You get sl- me so excited when you talk about forking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, your fiance is in chat. I thought I yes. had that. Oh, really? She's clearly not paying attention. Though. No, she Other accidentally people- <laughs> logged into our <laughs> chat room. Other people are saying hi to her. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I, mean I, th- I think it's becoming clear that Google has a plan to slowly but surely build this user base sure. of Chrome OS and slowly but surely try to make it appealing to consumers. And I mean, especially because even Microsoft has realized to an extent that traditional desktop applications are starting to matter less and less. And so Google is banking on yeah, that. They're not happy about that. Yeah. No, they're not. They did just buy a, a very large uh, smartphone manufacturer, yeah. which might help. But, you know, I, I, and, and certainly Google has in the past been fairly good about sunsetting things when they don't quite work out. They're, they're, they're certainly a lot better at that than, uh, than Microsoft has ever been. Yeah. I mean, we, we've I, seen some failures from Google and they, I don't think they're going to let it sunset though. I think if they've stuck with it for no, this no, that's long, what I'm saying. Chrome and Android into the same business division in Google. I mean, that's, that's another thing big is step. why are these two, two separate things are going to go together at some point. At some point we've been saying that for a long time, but you know, what does that, does that mean that you, does that mean that you add functionality to to Chrome, or does that mean you take functionality away from Tan, from Android? Neither. No. Um, well, I think you add some functionality to Chrome. I think what you'll see is Android applications coming to Chrome, at least in some form. Sure. Uh, you you might not be able to run all Android applications but if they're on the Chrome, same but I things- think I think you'll see uh, applications that are pitched as being universal. So that you can, you know, maybe they'll be coded in HTML5 and you can run them both on the desktop and Chrome and on your phone. And I think you'll see Chrome apps come to tablets and phones through the use of the Chrome browser. Your fiance's ears perked up, perked up when we started talking about forking, by the way. Oh. I just wanted to. <laughs> but you've got it. But, but, you know, if, if we are making these the same operating system, ultimately, then we're getting rid of that, that standard, that, that like more desktop functionality, right? Um. To, well, I mean, no more than it already has. I think that's the thing is whatever desktop functionality is missing in Chrome OS is always going to be missing. They're not going to build more of a traditional desktop to OS. I just don't think yeah. they're going to strip any more features away. It's already a glorified web browser. I mean, well, you know, what I, what I would say is, is this is getting so far afield. But what I would say is, um, you know, Chrome on Chrome on a smartphone, for example, is is is. It's a pretty interesting idea when you think about what what Mozilla is looking to do, you know, mm-hmm. to to make the cheapest handset possible mm-hmm. to create something that's purely browser based that doesn't have you know much in the way of built in storage. Yeah, but that requires always on functionality. Um, that that's one of the questions about Mozilla is how successful it will be. But in a lot of these developing nations where people don't even have like uh, people are buying smartphones who don't own computers, which seems probably a little crazy for us. But it's because, you know, there are, there, the infrastructure actually is in place for a lot of these, a lot of these places. Yeah. So. I'm getting blinded from the side <laughs> of that new building right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is painful. right in my eyeballs. I'm going to just stare at you. Right if you want. Dana. My sunglasses, I can go grab those for you. You can just sit here. Oh, you want just get me off of the bird. There you go. Yeah, give me the bird's glasses. Can you give me the beard while you're at it? This is important. There you go. Take Joe's hat too. <laughs> Joe's not giving up that hat. All right. Do you want to borrow my knife so you can? Do I get to wear the beard on one of these podcasts? Oh, do you want to? Yeah, you know that's only fair. Here, this is good for the audio <laughs> portion of the show. All right. Um, Who's? How many faces has this been on? Three. At least three. three. Me, you, Anna, your fiance. We're an yeah. incestuous bunch. There you go. Uh, is this the time where we start asking if people have questions before we get back to yeah, talking about Yeah, I think it's, it's 420, so smoke them if you got them, yep. and then, then when you're done smoking them, if you having them, send uh, some, some questions. Because those are the questions that I want. Yeah. <laughs> questions about snack food. Um, did you want to talk, um, talk about the Motorola thing real quick? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually almost segued to it earlier because you talked about throwing the iPhone, and I thought it was kind of fun that at the grand opening yeah. of the Motorola, the Moto X plant in Texas, on stage, Rick Perry decided to spike his iPhone yeah. into the ground. Something to like something, about Rick Perry. Yeah, something to like about Rick Perry, <laughs> and clearly a move he stole from me. I'm just going to mm. throw that out there. Yeah. When you were the governor of Texas. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
I just executed iPhones. <laughs> All right, and that was political talk with <laughs> hey, the Engadget Podcast. What else you got? What else you got for uh, for Motorola? So yeah, if you have any questions, chat is the place to do it. Or yeah, in the chat Twitter. or on on the Twitter. Twitter. It, you send them on Twitter if you can't. Uh, it's full. Well, it was full for a while. Yeah, for actually, most of the day. We, we 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 capped out. Um, yeah. I have nothing to say, but I'm stroking my beard thoughtfully. Mm-hmm. It's a good. W- it's a good way to go. This is yet another reason to watch a video version of the. Yeah. <laughs> to watch Dana stroke her beard. Yeah. How how yeah. often do you get that opportunity? Not very often. Literally, yeah. this if, is the first time. If anybody time. is listening to this as opposed to Anymore. watching, you are missing out <laughs> so much. You know, I, I I agree to humiliate myself on this podcast maybe once a year, maybe once every eighteen months. So that's not often enough. Yeah, we got a one to one ratio happening on our end. Yeah. This is not as bad as the time I chugged the the stuff. The the chocolate syrup. They can't it's actually yeah. see all the chocolate syrup around her lips because she's got a beard. Yeah, it's scaring the view. <laughs> Motorola. Yeah, Rick Perry. Throws a phone. <laughs> throws a phone. Kills a dude in the electric yeah. chair. I'm, I mean, I think, in a way, this is Motorola and Google sort of, you know, giving the middle finger to certain companies that are saying you can't reasonably manufacture these products in America and offer a reasonable price for them. Uh, they made a very big deal about opening this up and moving the manufacturing of it to America mm-hmm. and offering a competitive price on a product and you know they they were what was the quote something about um they were making a bet on america and they thought it was a really safe bet like i i think you're going to start seeing more of that from companies i mean you've seen a little bit of before motorola and google are hardly the first companies to decide to start making stuff in america right if but, these moto x phones were not so colorful and pretty to look at i don't think anyone would want to see a factory tour yeah I You're mean, looking at me skeptically. True. Maybe you would. I, I, I think, I, I think, I think, I think they would in the states. I, th- I don't think it's. It just comes down to color because I think that this is something that people have been talking about a long time. That um, manufacturing has obviously moved away from the states and pretty much every, every. You know, every product that's manufactured yeah. is manufactured outside of the United and, States. And so, so yeah, I think there is. I think there is some excitement to that. Yeah, I, I, I think, think people just want to see what phone factories look like because traditionally bad things have happened there. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, their their experience with seeing what phone factories look like are generally lots of netting around yeah. the third floor. <laughs> yeah, and and you know we we have yet to see how successful they could be, but this could certainly set a very good precedent. Yeah. I mean, maybe you know and. Granted, starting with the United States, but hopefully, you know, hopefully moving out there, hopefully all the, the ships will, will raise with the tide and maybe people will actually get paid a living wage to manufacture these phones that we so cherish. That would be sweet, wouldn't it? It would be really nice. Mm-hmm. So there's a question in chat for Terrence with an A. I don't know. Do you want to take it? Um, I don't know a Terrence with an A, but I'll answer this one anyway. Okay. I don't know why. I have no idea why this was uh, targeted towards you, but uh, somebody yeah. wants to know if uh, Apple will succumb to the size wars, which I assume they're talking about phones. Yeah, I guess the I guess he's talking about, you know, screen the size. giant screen size yeah. phones. I very much doubt it. That's a very, I think that's a pretty easy and straightforward answer. Gradually. I think the next yeah, step is a 4.3 inch right. screen yeah. instead think, of a 4 inch one. I think they'll, they'll get slightly larger as the trends go that way, mm-hmm. but I don't think that because Apple is sticking with a 4 inch screen this time around, they're going to be subsumed by Samsung and their you know, no. Note 3. I don't think that's a concern of theirs at all. This was my theory that I espoused on um, on the last, the last episode that I think that 3... Three is a magic number for handsets for a company to produce. Yeah. Flagship, high specs, budget. So, you know, Apple's got two to three, and then the third is a larger size option. I think you get that. I think that's I think that's a sweet spot right there. Yep. One's too few, ninety eight as Samsung has proven <laughs> can be too many from time to time. Um, we have another question. Dana, somebody wants to know if you're single. See, I didn't ask that one. No, you don't I th- I thought we were gonna get Dana. Is it, mm, match her up with somebody? I think you're going. Weirdo? I think you're going down a, a, a dark road, <laughs> Terrence. Oh, we like the weirdos in chat, though. <laughs> My beard is single. Beard is single. It's getting around. I you mean, can, yeah, I mean, that, that beard <laughs> it's not is a monogamous yeah. beard. Slut. Yeah, that, yeah, that's time to t- to go to the free clinic beard. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, any other questions? <laughs> I'm not seeing any. Somebody likes Moto X. Um, Somebody wants to know about the pad phone Infinity. I uh, what do they want to know about it specifically? I, mean, I probably can't answer it anyway. Probably next week it's it's going to launch. Oh, sure. Um, I'm actually not up on too. that one. 
Yeah, no, that's that's the word going around. Um, we saw some phone pads last week, but didn't see any pad phones. This is true. Maybe Asus has more to get out of its system. They had a set. They had a god, what like about a half dozen devices at IFA last week. Yeah, um, not all of them new. Some of them yeah. were first teased, refreshes. Or, yeah, shown at Computex, and then they just sort of sure. trotted them out again. What do you? What do you? What, what are your thoughts on the on the pad phone as a as an idea? I'm gonna remove my beard. This thing is itchy. How do you guys have real beards yeah. in real life? Wow, you are. Yeah, you're like bright red. Well, this is not as itchy as that. I wore that. What like? Oh three God! Weeks I looked ago down and saw the hair on my chest. <laughs> like, oh God! Help! Um, uh, we're talking yeah. about what? Pad phones? <laughs> phone pads? Yes, phone pads. Phone pads. Yes, phone. It, phone pads, not pad phones. That's, that's very not pad tie. Yes, yeah. different. Okay. Pad Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a spicy one. I think yes. it's cool to have a, a tablet that with phone capabilities it's reasonably priced like the phone pad. Mm-hmm. Because you saw the Galaxy Tab 7.7, which had basically the same capabilities, but was way more expensive yeah. when we reviewed it. So it's nice to see that at a more um, attainable price than, you know, back then. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I feel the same way about it that I do about Chrome OS, which is why? 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I understand that everybody's sort of trying something slightly different in the space, but I, um, I don't think it's going to be anybody's primary driver. Nope. Except for people over seven feet tall, potentially. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I just. I, I don't know why you need additional phone functionality on a tablet. I know you're. I know. I know. I know, Dana. Um, you know, especially when you can Skype on the thing. Yeah, I mean, when you can, you know, when VoIP is is so prevalent, at least not in the way that they've done it. Not not with the handset that pops out. It sure, doesn't make any sense. Um, data makes sense. Yeah, cellular data makes sense, but that's not that's nothing new. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll say this as a okay. closing note: I would sooner make a phone call on the phone pad than on a smartwatch. I would sooner use a Bluetooth headset you don't, you or don't a pair of do headphones. One of these? I like. You, you don't, don't want wanna, everybody to hear. You want to Dick Tracy it? Yeah. Get the, yeah. Yeah. Dick Tracy it. No, but don't Dick Tracy it. <laughs> Not cool. Do any of you guys have a smartphone, smart watch, and would you get one in the future? I think that's a good segue question. Um, I don't. You don't. You don't. I don't know. Um, I don't have one, no. I don't know. Maybe I'm willing. I don't actually have a tablet either, but I'm willing. I don't have a TV either, but I'm willing to. <laughs> you're the wrong person to ask this no, question. No, no, I, I, you're, I, you're not a, a cutting edge technology well, adopter. I, I own recent things. I'm just, you know, I, I own what I feel like I need in my life. Yeah, I don't know if a smartwatch is that right now. I, I, I would say that, without any question, I don't think we've seen a killer app for it. Nope. I, I, especially with so many big manufacturers getting into the space, I can certainly see that changing in the very near future. Yeah. Somebody could figure out the really cool thing to do with it. I, you know, um, again, fitness space is, is interesting, but I'm exercised just fine without having something tell me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that stuff though. Like personally, like I'm a fan of the fitness apps and that sort of thing. And so that appeals to me, but I don't think that's enough of a selling point to drop I $300 want, on a watch. I've always said I wouldn't mind travel apps on something like that. Something where I could have a mobile boarding pass. Something where I could maybe see TripIt and see my itinerary sure. and my flight numbers. Or if your flight was delayed. Um, yeah. It would throw get, up an alert. Yeah, throwing up. If you have to throw up, it'll it'll send an alert. That's yeah. great, too, Terrence. <laughs> good call. Um, yeah, I mean, getting your messages is cool. But again, this is another... This is not... This is a surrogate. I mean, this is not... It's not a surrogate. It's not a replacement for... Your handset, you're still gonna have to carry that. Around. Yeah, it's an accessory, so it doesn't do really wanna... do a lot. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot. And as we've seen, that doesn't necessarily uh, always play out so well when you build like these sort of interesting accessories that are reliant on another primary piece of technology. Yeah, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. I, I'm not averse to the idea of wearing a watch, and I have worn a watch in the, in the past. Yeah, uh, if someone can make one that looks good, is actually a really attractive you know, thing that you would want to wear in your body. And you don't have to charge it every day. And you don't have to charge it every day, which is something that a lot of them have taken care of. I mean, a lot of them are at least, you know, once a week or every few days. We'll see what that's that important to galaxy gear thing. I don't know. It's got to be under a hundred bucks. It's got to be. Yes. hundred dollars or less. Yeah. Sure. $99 nice looking piece of hardware that, it, that you charge, um, you know, once a week. Yeah, sure. I could see buying a smartwatch. 
but it's going to be a few generations before that happens. Yeah, I don't anticipate. I don't buy anything until Apple comes out with it. <laughs> and that is that. Uh, do you think that Microsoft purposely sabotaged Nokia to buy it at a lower price and will now do the same to Pandora? <laughs> Oh, I love that um, question they, so much. The question they kept sabotage getting, Nokia by get better and better as I was reading on and on. So they sabotage Nokia by making them use their own their OS. Own, yeah. yeah, they created okay. Windows Phone <laughs> as a way to tank Nokia. Okay. Well, you know, one a former Microsoft guy did. How how you know how deep into the weeds do you want to get in this conspiracy theory? Because the guy who used to run uh, Office now runs Nokia. Yeah. Now Microsoft owns Nokia. So no, no I don't think, I think that, that Microsoft wanted more than anything to have a very successful smartphone operating system. Yes, and I think yeah. Nokia more than anything wanted to have a successful smartphone. Sure. And, and a I business don't, that was not dead. Yeah. Yeah. And and to be honest, I don't know I, I I don't know if I would say that Nokia is that much worse now than they were, you know, a year or two ago. Nope. They were always in really bad shape. They were if anything, they were in worse shape because they didn't have any vision, and at least they've got some sort of vision at this point. Whether or not that's going to really lead them quit future is another question. But at least they're at least they're they're taking risks. They're making nice pieces of hardware, and they're trying. So no, are they Star trying to? Effort. As as far as Pandora, <laughs> did, you break it, did you break it again? No. Just, we'll staple it. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure where the where the Pandora question comes from. Uh, I mean, well, I, you know, I. I you know, they, they, uh, Microsoft's been trying to break into music distribution for a while. There's no question about that. Zune Pass was a thing for a while. And uh, Apple's making a very aggressive push against Pandora with iTunes Radio. Um, a proprietary Pandora-like client would certainly make sense on the Xbox. Yes. And if you're trying to lock people into your ecosystem, something that you can use across devices. Uh, do I think they're tanking Pandora, however, to do that? I think probably not. Yeah. I feel but like I'm willing be, to be surprised. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're all willing to be surprised by anything that Microsoft does at this point. Yeah, how many companies are willing to sabotage to get their way? <laughs> Including themselves? Including themselves, yeah. I mean, maybe this, is all, maybe this was all a big plan to get uh, Bill Gates' foundation to buy Microsoft. Or maybe this was a big way to undermine the Bill Gates Foundation. Mm. They don't like that he's out there trying to kill mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's like malaria. Is, is this the pro? <laughs> they're, they're, you they're think the, that Microsoft is being run by the pro malaria flank? Yes. Fair, uh, fair question. Is Last FM not working for them? I mean, that's a good question. I don't know. I I do use Last FM. Yeah, we. I think me and you were the last two people on Earth. We're the last, last, last. And September's. actually, I've kind of pretty much left it behind at this point. Yeah, I mean, every time I plug my phone in, it scrabbles. Yeah, um, I no. I like people knowing the awesome music that I listen to. I mean, that's fine. I do like that, too. It's actually one of the things that I miss having made the move from Spotify to Google Music is I yeah. don't have that constantly updating list of You don't of comment things. every time I listen to the Melvins, Terrence. I know. It's sad. I don't know what embarrassing things uh, Darren is listening to on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, my, yeah. How many times can Michael listen to Angels and Airwaves, Terrence? Answer, that's... all of the times. <laughs> yes. All of the times ever. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty good place to to, to stop the show. And, on Angels and, and Airwaves? Yeah, and good for us for talking about more than Apple this week. Yeah, I know. We Step up your game, really Apple. Quick. <laughs> Step up your game. Let me say this one last thing about Apple. Yeah. Go ahead. What was the, la what was the last exciting thing they announced? The last genuinely exciting thing they announced? The Maybe we should just leave that question. We, you don't even want to answer it for yourself. You just want to leave it out there. MacBook Air? No, probably the iPad, which was more recent. I might be the only person in the world who did not give a crap about the iPad. I went, yep. Yeah, but it, but it, it was certainly the last revolutionary thing they did. You know, it, They recreated the tablet space. Yeah, I don't... Spice, I don't know. Somebody's saying spi something about Spice Girls in chat. I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm bearded spice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're reforming with a new spice, and Dana is bearded spice. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, the one who doesn't have to sing. Apple's stock, not surprisingly, Apple's stock price dropped again during last announcement. Um, and I think it probably dropped again during this podcast because... 
I don't know. I think market movers. Yes. If nothing else. Yeah, but but I I think I think you guys are looking at the wrong way. I think when we crap on a product, the <laughs> goes, the market turns go, around. And gadget hates it. It must be great. Yeah, um, yeah, but that this stock every time they do an announcement until they do something really super until they take a big risk at an event, the stock yeah. price is going to continue to drop. Yep. Because so. Apple is a company that looks like it doesn't have a lot of vision right now, and and you know and, and certainly in 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 Tim Tim Cook's defense that that takes a while. I mean, Steve Jobs hasn't been gone that long when it really comes down to it, and yeah. he apparently still had a hand in the iPhone five, from what we're told. Yep, and you know, it's it's not like Steve Jobs came back and immediately blew everybody away with these revolutionary products. I mean, you know. Sure. He returned Apple to relevance, but primarily by putting colored windows on existing desktop PCs. <laughs> Those first iMacs were pretty sweet, though. Oh, I mean, that's fine. Yeah. They were nice. Like a little Volkswagen bugs you can <laughs> do computing on. Yeah, pretty much. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Thank you for letting me wear your beard. I'm anytime. honored. Anytime. Literally anytime. You call me up anytime. I will let you wear my beard. Thank you for being my beard, Dana. Yes. Uh, Dana Woman, at Dana Woman on Twitter. Instagram. Do you Instagram? I do, but I have a locked account because too many weirdos were following me. Fair that's, enough. And they're all in the chat right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, Terrence, Terrence O'Brien on that's Twitter. Right. I'm on Twitter. I'm Beater. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. That was fun. Fun yeah, show. Good. good show. Woo. Yay.